Hey guys, Casual Critic here, and today we'll be looking into 5 advanced tips for playing Valheim, so let's get started. Tip number one is that you can actually use trees to build higher for your buildings. Using trees, you can get to quite some heights in your buildings, and you can use them to create tree houses. How is that possible? Obviously, you can just jam some poles into the ground and start building on top of that around a tree, that's fine. The main thing here is that everything that you attach to a tree is turning blue. That means it's a foundation piece and as I mentioned in my earlier video about building, if it's a foundation piece basically it's equivalent to being built on the ground level. So you can extend the full length of what you're allowed to be building with wood from this piece onwards. Um, and because you're already quite high up in the air, this allows for some crazy setups, basically. And this isn't even the highest part of the tree. Obviously, you can get quite high with it. And if I go into my tree hut attic, everything that's connecting straight to the tree is actually blue, so that's the foundation piece. So I can get quite high up from this point. Although, as you can see, the canopy of the tree is in my way and it's already making it quite a bit harder than usual to start building. But I can definitely just make a pawn go uh, horizontally out of this tree and continue building my tree house from that point onwards. So building around trees or actually using trees to build upon makes um, for a much higher building than you can normally get to. So that's tip number one. Use trees for tree houses. Tip number two is to dig in between these circles of stones. You'll encounter these circles of stones quite often throughout the world and you may just notice them and think, hey, that's funny. But if you actually dig down inside of those circles, you'll find up to three pieces of treasure, usually. And pieces of treasure can be anything from uh, skeleton remains, which I'm finding here, which is basically exactly the same as killing a random skeleton. But also um, you can find coins and even treasure chests with all kind of goodies inside of them. So uh, if you encounter one of these circles of stones, just grab your pickaxe and start digging down. And you can clear the entire area and find up to three, I think, pieces of treasure. Whether this is worth it or not is up to you, but uh, it's pretty fun to, uh, to do it for the first time, I guess. Uh, I wasn't aware of that until quite late in the game. And um, sometimes you can be unlucky and just really don't find anything of value, like I am in this video, so I'll just speed up the footage. And I don't really find anything besides some random corpses. But um, yeah, if you encounter a circle of stone throughout the world and you want to look for some extra treasure, grab your pickaxe and start digging. Tip number three is basically to dig a moat around your base or at least a ditch around your base, separating the, well, the forest from your actual base, not only by a fence, but also by this deep ditch. The further you get into the game, the more often your base is under attack and the more difficult those attacks can become. And having this moat around your base really helps with not having to repair your fence every time after your base has become under attack. Now, this moat isn't exactly the widest moat you'll ever see. I would love to have it wider, but that's quite a chore to build. And keep in mind that having it this wide does allow, for example, trolls with trees as weapons to still hit your fences. So it's not watertight. Um, a, a wider moat would be great, but this already helps with all the other attacks with smaller monsters, basically, because they can't attack my fence. The only thing that they can attack is the little bridges I have over um, over that moat, which I have sealed off by two sets of gates paired with some guard towers from which we can shoot arrows, etc. But usually they don't even attack those parts of the gate because, for example, they, they come out of this direction, out of this part of the forest, and they really want to get into my base from this point, which obviously they can't because there's a moat around. So really consider digging a moat or a ditch around your camp as that really helps with safety in the long run. Tip number four is increasing your rested buff bonus or your rested level to create a better bonus. As you can see here, I am at comfort level 11, which currently gives me 18 minutes of rested buff after I rest in my treehouse. 
Now, how did I get it so high? Because obviously it depends on what kind of furniture you're using. Each piece of furniture has a certain level of comfort that it provides you, but as it may appear to be stacking, not everything stacks the way you think it does. For example, a bed gives you one level of comfort, as does a fire, that's fine. But you also have an upgraded bed, which I'll not show here, but that increases your level of comfort, but only if you don't have any normal beds around anymore. The fire, for example, can also be upgraded. Here you see a different kind of fire than what you start with and a different kind of bonfire that you find halfway through. Um, and this increases the comfort level of your resting area, basically. So use the better part of, of your fire. That helps a lot. Lighting, for example, also helps. And here I have a, a chandelier or a brazier, I think it's called in game. Let's see. A hanging brazier, which gives the most comfort level for any of these things. And I also have a banner up there. Alongside with that, I have some furniture, some other furniture, like a table and a chair. But in this case, you have multiple tables and chairs. You have, for example, a stool, but we chose the chair as it gives a higher comfort level. The same goes for the bench. Just take the stool, or the chair, I'm sorry. Take the chair, it gives the highest comfort level. So add a table to that, add a rug, a deer rug, and later on you'll unlock a second kind of rug. So add that on top as well. It doesn't really help to add more deer rugs by themselves, but having two separate kind of rugs does help. The same goes for the chair and the throne, for example. And increasing the level of furniture that you have and for each possible slot of furniture have the best quality furniture in your resting area increases your comfort level. And while increasing that comfort level, that increases the maximum duration of your rested buff. So the higher your comfort level, the higher, the longer your rested buff will stay around. And especially later in the game, that rested buff can get really, really interesting to keep on at all times. Tip number five is about sailing. And basically, if you're sailing around, cruising the ocean, alone or with a friend, and you encounter a little circular island, you may just want to pass that. But tip number five is actually to pay attention to those little circular islands, and you may want to check out what they're all about. Um, I won't spoil it too much, but it can be worth um, actually docking on them and exploring their little area a little bit, you may find something of, uh, of value. Wink, wink. So, tiny little circular islands out in the ocean. Pay attention to them and check them out. And that's everything for today. I hope this video was useful. If it was, please give this video a like. And if you're feeling specifically fancy, you may even want to consider subscribing to the channel. You're more than welcome to the club. So uh, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.